Hey, I'm Brian Vance, BoardBikeTrackHere.com, and today we're going to do a product review on the all-new Showy GT Air 2 helmet. Okay, the all-new GT Air 2 retails from $599 to $699, depends on if you want solid or if you want to get a graphic helmet. Who is this helmet right for? This helmet includes a drop-down inner shield. It also allows for integration, direct integration of the Cena SRL2, which is designed to fit this, and we'll talk about this later, show and install video on this, and the Neotech 2 helmet. So if you're a street rider, touring rider, that wants the convenience of having an integrated communicator from one of the most reputable brands out there, you like the option of that drop down inner screen, this helmet is a great option for you. This isn't something we would look for for track riding, this is a street and touring focused helmet. Okay, the Showy GT Air 2 helmet is DOT certified only. This does not have a Snell or an ECE cert. We've talked about this in a separate video. DOT only helmets do have somewhat of a stigma if you're into the safety standards. When I look at a company like Showy, high-end company, great reputation, long history, their DOT only helmet is for sure going to pass that standard, okay? And the DOT standard is actually quite good. The reason they haven't submitted it for Snell is helmets with a drop-down inner screen typically do not do very well, play nicely with that Snell standard. So I believe this is a good, safe helmet. Weight, on our digital shipping scale, this came in at 3.65 pounds in a size medium. Given the construction, the type of helmet, I would say that weight is reasonable. When you have it on, it wears what I would view very balanced. Fit and sizing. I measure 58 centimeters on the money. My head shape is intermediate oval. This helmet, in a size medium, fits me very well. There's no pressure points, no hot spots, just tons of comfort. I would rate the shape of the helmet to be intermediate oval, which is a little bit longer front to back than it is side to side. At this point, coming into the U.S. market, I feel that the majority of the helmets now have really landed on that intermediate oval shape as it fits most people here in the U.S. quite well. There are certainly you know, exceptions to that, but it's going to fit most people quite well. Part of fit is going to be on-off effort. Okay, some people don't like it when it takes a little bit to get the helmet over the ears and sometimes the ears will fold over depending on the fit of the helmet. For me, no ear folding. The on-off effort is good. It's not bad. It's not too difficult and it's not too easy. Because remember, you want it to be hard enough that it seals up well around the neck. That helps keep the helmet quiet. This includes a pretty robust chin curtain right here. And when that is in, the on-off effort for me is a little harder because you kind of feel this, you know, up around the nose and so on and so forth. You just, just feel it a little bit more. When you take that out, the on-off effort becomes much, much easier. Also important, the distance between your nose and the chin bar of the helmet. This is something that can be a sensitive point for some people. Myself, there are some helmets that will be a little close for me, some that I'll actually even touch. This one, I had, I would say, a good finger's worth of room between the end of my nose and the chin bar of the helmet, if that's something that's important to you. Okay, we get the question all the time, how does it work with glasses? Here are the glasses that we're gonna use. And we'll just show you. You know, initially going on, definitely takes a little bit of effort. And I would say overall, it's not bad, except for I can't get the glasses you know, down on top of my ears. They're, the helmet is actually kind of holding them a little high so the glasses aren't sitting naturally on my face. For myself, I would say overall it's not bad if you're sensitive to that as the glasses wear and you want the sides of the glasses to be on top of your ears so this is resting naturally on your face, this may not be the best option for you. Okay, let's jump into the features and the benefits of the GT Air 2. This is a big deal. It ships with the pin lock insert, right? It's gonna go right in the clear shield that chips on the helmet. Fog-free technology that actually works. I already mentioned earlier, the SRL2, the Cena integration, if that's something you're interested in too. We have another video, we'll show you how that installs and give you an idea of what it looks like after. I'm not going to use the Cena. That's not something I would normally ride around in, 
but you can see what it takes to install it in the helmet and what the finished product is going to look like. Ventilation. We have intake vents. This is a, a two position. So we have completely off, stage one, stage two, here on the top of the helmet. Either on or off, here at the chin bar. These are going to be your intake vents. From there, we have exhaust vents in three positions to help cool this. Ventilation with a helmet like this, this will be good. It'll move a good amount of air. It's going to be enough to be comfortable. But when you take and you add a drop down inner screen into a helmet, like they have here, there's always a little bit of a trade off when it comes to ventilation. It's nearly impossible to get this to ventilate on the same level that they can, say, an RF-1200 or an X-14 due to the fact that you do have that drop-down inner screen that exists in between the outer shell of the helmet and the EPS itself. More features, more bennies. We have a micro-lock adjuster, so instead of D-rings here, and you can see this is all stainless steel, this is high-quality stuff, so if you're into the quick-release stuff, you dig that, this is good for you. Plenty of adjustment here. Get it dialed in. No worries at all. Three shell sizes throughout the sizes to try and keep the exterior size of the helmet as small as possible. And you can see with this, in terms of a medium, this is not a big bulbous helmet. It looks really sleek. Okay, And of course, you get up to the next shell size, it's going to grow just a little bit more. Helmet ships with. A chin curtain, it ships with, but not installed, a breath deflector. It also includes a little tool right here to help remove the drop down inner screen. We're going to show you that when I get into the disassembly portion of this video. This drop down inner screen is a little longer, okay? So you see this really drops down nicely so you don't have that break in, in your vision, right? Nobody really digs that. You're like, man, I, I just wish this would come down a little bit further. With that said, we're all different shapes. Our heads are different shapes and we all have different preferences. Showy understood that, so they built into this a easy to use system that can change the height that that comes down to. Simply lift up here on both sides. Just a little tab, it locks into place and that is going to limit the travel downward. You can see the difference right there of that drop-down inner. Focusing on the drop-down inner screen, they really, I mean, look at, that's not bobbing around, right? That's really in there. The engineering is an area where show really separates themselves. It's the fine details with their helmets. That's what you're paying for, the difference in price between this and some of the competition. This thing is so buttery smooth, and when you get to the very top, it kind of you feel it gets just a little more difficult to pull, right? And then it locks in place. When I had it on, kind of smacking the helmet, you don't hear it rattling around, and that is the showy quality, the showy engineering. Focusing still on the shield, this shield has a lock on it. You push down here on the tab, like so, and the shield is going to be all the way in the downward position. Let's say that the conditions are such that you want a little extra ventilation inside the helmet. You want the shield open just a crack. They've engineered that into the shield. As you kind of lift up, there is that first detent, and it's a it's a really strong detent, okay? So it's gonna hold it right there in just that crack position. From there, you can lift up, and there are some other detents to work with as well. Fully removable, washable, replaceable interior. We're gonna disassemble it show you how that all comes apart and give you a closer look at the inside of the helmet. Okay, shield removal and reinstallation. To remove the outer shield, you want to get it all the way in the upward most position like so. From here, pull down on this trigger. I'm going to try and make sure Caleb has the opportunity to show you this closely. And I'm pulling forward ever so slightly. So down, pull forward on the shield and roll it out like so. We'll do the same thing on the other side. On the other side, pull down. Make sure you're all the way in the uppermost position. Pull forward and kind of rock it around a little bit. That is how the shield comes off. I will say that compared to some of the other shield ratchet systems they've used, this one, there's a lot of engineering here. They've got that little detent and everything built into it. This one, you know, it's a little different to use. I don't think it's a big deal. It's certainly not a reason to avoid the helmet but it is a little wonkier. That was my experience with it. So now to get it back on, 
You want to kind of simulate that all the way up position, okay? Go ahead and pull that trigger down, and you need to rotate this around like so. So I was putting a little pressure towards the helmet, pulling forward ever so slightly because that, that ratchet is spring-loaded. That's to help hold the shield against the gasket. Okay, now to reinstall the other side, same thing. You want to get it in that channel, kind of rotate it around, pull forward on that tab, and then pull forward just a little bit on that ratchet. Test it a couple of times, up and down, to make sure that you've got it before you go out and ride in it. Removal once again, pull down on the trigger, pull forward, down on the trigger, pull forward, off it comes. The drop-down inner screen, these can be a little bit challenging, right, on some models. Some of them you have to just pull to release internal clips, and that can be a little bit unnerving. I like what they did here with the design. This one is a lot smoother, in my opinion. Here is the release tool. And we're going to do the best we can to give you a good look at this. You want to take this release tool and slide it up in like so, and then roll this thing forward and down, okay? Hopefully Caleb was able to catch that. We've got some dark colors here, clearly, so. Tool, slide it into the bottom right here, and then grab that and just kind of rock it down and then pull forward. And pull that breath deflector out, get ourselves a little more room. Now we'll take a quick look at it and this will really help illustrate the motion that you're going to need to use to remove and reinstall. This tab right here is at the bottom. That needs to dip into the channel. From there, once that locks in, you rotate this thing back and this button right here lines up with a hole in the uh, actual arm that holds this inner shield. It snaps in place, easy peasy, okay? Reinstallation. You want to make sure that the mechanism is down. Slide this into the channel like so. Once again, this is really tough to show. It's small stuff, dark colors. Once you get it in there, you want to make sure that you've got the bottom portion locked in. Kind of rock it up and back. Okay, now the other side. And once again, we're going to do the best we can to show you this. You need to slide that into the channel, push down, and make sure that you have that tab all the way inside of the mechanism. From there, a little pressure back and up. It clips right into place. Obviously, inspect your work once you're done. Test it a couple of times. Make sure everything is good to go. Out of all the systems that I've experienced over the years with these drop-down inner shields, this is probably one of the easier when it comes to changing the inner screen. Okay, now let's go ahead and remove the interior, give you a real close look from the inside out. You can learn a lot about a helmet when you have it disassembled. To remove the chin curtain, put your thumb inside the curtain, pull it out and back. Okay, that's the easiest way to do that. You don't wanna pull here on the rearward portions first. Thumb under, pull it out and back. These are emergency release cheek pads, okay? So first responder, they could. Just grab onto these, and you can remove the cheek pads like that and just pull down. For service purposes, what I like to do is get my fingers in between the back of the cheek pad and the EPS of the helmet and pop loose the three snaps that are there holding it in place. Pull up on the front, rock it back, and then slide the rear out. Give you a close-up look here at the quality of the showy liner. I mean, they're famous for that. Everything here is absolutely top notch. The other cheek pad, of course, is a simple mirror image. This is going to be a good opportunity, too, to give you guys a real nice look at how they've designed the integration for that Cena. Two snaps here at the back for the top pad. From there, roll it up, get your fingers underneath it, and just lift up and forward on that top pad. Give you a look at that once again, first rate. Now inside the helmet, you can see the channeling they have built in to the EPS of the helmet. That is to help, of course, encourage ventilation and airflow in this. Here are the pockets. 
the covers for the communicators. These are removable. If you're going to install the Cena SRL2, and honestly, I don't know why you would buy a different one. They need to bolt to the outside of the helmet when they have this integrated model at $299. You can see there's the speaker pocket there. They have channels built into the backside of the EPS, the plastic on the backside of the EPS to help hide the wires, route everything nice and clean. These are pretty easy to remove. Just kind of get your fingernail underneath it, pop it out like so. See if we can get the chin bar. Can you see that, Caleb, where there's the actual indent for the microphone for this? They have a little piece of Velcro on that kit. It just slides right in there. You can hide all the wires, super nice. Showy really did a great job with the engineering on this helmet. If you want to see all the steps it takes to install the SRL2, which I think that's going to be a big deal for a lot of folks. Like I said, we're going to have a separate video on just that. This is the cover plate that uh, hides the pocket that holds the unit itself. The two side plates house the wiring and the control buttons, right? It's a nice clean install, a lot like we saw on the Neotech 2. And I think this is something that people are going to have a lot of interest in moving forward. What do I think of the helmet? Once again, having not ridden in it. Showy builds a great product. The engineering of the Showy, the final just assembly, just the, those little details are where Showy pulls away from the competition. They own that, right? They just dial it all into a super high level. So if you're a street rider, a touring rider that is looking for a communicator that installs super clean, integrates with the helmet, you like the idea of that drop down inner screen so you don't have to do shield swaps, this should be on your short list. I'm Brian Van, SportbikeTrackGear.com.